One of the greatest baseball players to ever pitch a ball was Tom Glavin. From million dollar houses to a stunning wife to a shocking revelation about his coaching career and lots more, we've got you all covered. This is the incredible lifestyle of Tom Glavin. One would think that if a baseball legend was going to become a coach after their playing years, it would be in baseball. That would be the reasonable or at least expected choice. But for Glavin, this is not the case at all. Glavin's pitching as a left-hander was so deceptive batters would quake to see him up on the mound. He had great control of the ball in such a way that he could switch the speeds and deceive the trajectory of the ball. His fastballs and changeups were always a confusing dilemma for hitters to comprehend with. So it would make sense to want to pass on these skills to the next generation, right? Well, if you ever had any dreams of getting coached by the great Glavin, you're out of luck. Now, it's not that he isn't a coach, he's just a coach for a hockey team. Before his Hall of Fame induction, he revealed in a telephone interview with the Mercury News that he wasn't defined by baseball. Saying, I'm not defined by baseball. I'd love for the Hall of Fame to happen, but if it doesn't, my life won't change. I'll still be coaching my boys' games. So there you have it, Glavin coaches the team his son plays for. And do not worry about whether he can do that too, because he can. Before he became the baseball star that he was, he had excelled in ice hockey in high school. As a hockey star, he netted 47 goals and 47 assists in only 23 school games. And when he became a senior, he was the most valuable player of the Merrimack Valley. He even got drafted by the Los Angeles Kings in the 1984 National Hockey League entry draft, but he elected to play baseball and signed for the Atlanta Braves. It was a good decision because his career canvas is painted with colorful strokes that include five National League wins leader, one-time World Series MVP and champion, 10 All-Star appearances, two National League Cy Young Awards, and four Silver Slugger Awards. But even if he had chosen hockey back then in 1984, he most likely would have made a huge mark in the NHL too. Anyway, he has the chance of doing that as a coach, and like he said, quote, even though I decided to play baseball, I never stopped watching hockey. It's a great game. Being able to coach and teach kids about the game is an opportunity I enjoy a great deal. I'm having a great time doing it. He first coached his stepson, Jonathan, in hockey when the kid played for the Fires 18 and under team. Let's not also forget when he signed a one-day deal for the Gladiator to play hockey. Then he moved on to coach Mason and Peyton, his two biological sons. Glavin has five children. His first daughter, Amber Glavin, is a product of his first marriage to Carrie Ann Dobbins, which lasted from 1992 to 1997. Glavin later married the beautiful Christine Glavin on November 14, 1998. She's a graduate of Daytona State College and currently works as an advocate for childhood cancer. She gave birth to Mason and Peyton, then she and Tom later adopted their last child, Keenan Patrick, when he was only four weeks old in 2009. Mason Glavin still plays hockey for the Atlanta Fire, but Peyton is the only child that has decided to follow in his father's footsteps of becoming a baseball player. Peyton played in high school and was drafted in the 2017 MLB draft, but he chose to play for the Auburn University before signing a professional deal with the Washington Nationals in 2021. Now, with so many children, Tom must have a big home to accommodate all of them, right? Well, if you had a net worth of $80 million like Tom does, what kind of house would you buy? For Glavin, he's had a few homes to hold all his babies. When he was living in Atlanta during his time with the Braves, he and his wife custom built a home in Atlanta with a building that covered roughly 16,000 square feet. The house was built to be a playground for the children and was equipped with a sports court for hockey, baseball field, a pool, an arcade, and a billiards room. Another thing that made the home fun was a display area built to hold various collections of guitars used by top musicians like Maroon 5 and Paul McCartney. Speaking about the idea behind the house, Tom said, We were trying to be that house where the children wanted to hang out with their friends so that we could covertly keep an eye on them. But in 2008, Tom complained that the house was now too big to live in as most of his kids started to move out for college and their careers. So he listed the home for sale at $6.7 million in 2018. 
but it was bought for $5.6 million. They have also lived in a 10,000 square foot home in Alpharetta, Georgia, but sold this one later for $1.7 million. Then there was another home he owned just west of Panama City along Florida's 30A, which he bought in 2011 for $7 million. This particular home was almost too good to be true in terms of the kind of features it had. An outdoor pool is present, but it is the view of the beach that you can get from any part of the house that was even more exceptional. However, five years later, he sold it for a whopping $10 million. He's been busy these past years in real estate and made a rather unusual purchase recently. Because he's always enjoyed the coastal life with his family, they had decided to spend a weekend in a luxurious apartment at Alice Beach, Georgia. This was in 2019, and by the time they were ready to leave after having a good time, they had the crazy idea of building something related to where they had stayed. Christine Glavin was so excited about Alice Beach, she declared, I'm still in awe of the beauty of Alice. To me, it's Greece meets Morocco meets Bermuda. I'm still noticing some architectural details for the first time when we drive through. We've committed to making this paradise our full-time home. So they bought a lot at the beach once it was available and went to work immediately. They employed architects Marianne Quarry Voigt and Eric Voigt for the design. The same people that had designed most of the houses in the 30A. The finished product is a three-story building made mostly of masonry and wood strong enough to withstand any crazy weather. It has features like Venetian plaster walls, stucco exterior, and private courtyards. It would have been an almost white apartment if not for the wooden materials used on the tables, doors, and windows. Here they'll be able to fish while enjoying their marriage, their two dogs, and the occasional visits from other members of their family. Tom will be delighted even more as there are a number of golf courses around where he can easily go to play another of his most passionate sports and pastimes. He's been an avid golfer for some time. It's a passion he's begun since he was a kid in Massachusetts, where he was born and bred. He used to carry his dad's club to golf in fields in their neighborhood and even got the chance to hit a few rounds in the summer with some friends at the country club course in Billerica, Massachusetts. But unlike hockey and baseball, he wasn't really enthusiastic about developing his golfing skills. But now that he's retired, there's enough time to do just that. And let's not forget how cool golfing makes anyone look. But one very important thing about golfing to Tom is how it's been one of the few ways he's preserved his friendship with former teammates Greg Maddox and John Schmoltz. With him in the clubhouse and on the field, these three stars had made the powerful trio that led the Atlanta Braves to the 1995 World Series title. While they were still playing baseball in the 1990s, they would usually steal some time out to golf in elite golf courses around the country. Before Tom was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he received a special gift from his friend Jack Kennedy. Kennedy had sent him six dozen golf balls displaying his uniform number, 47 on one side, and funny enough, the number of lost as he had in his career, which was 203 on the other side of the ball. In 2021, Tom and his wife organized a charity golf tournament called Tom Glavin's Field of Dreams Charity Golf Tournament. The tournament raised $90,000 in support of the Seaside School Foundation, which is dedicated to aiding the local schools in Georgia. It's the first tournament of its kind, but one which would certainly not be its last, as Tom had revealed in an interview after the game. Tom and Christine have also been instrumental in the fight against cancer, particularly through the Cure Childhood Cancer. Foundation kicked off after Christine partnered with Kristen Connor, the executive director of Cure in 2006. Foundation has raised millions ever since to support families and victims of cancer. Glavin has continued to stay true to his Catholic faith and remain humble about his lifestyle. If you enjoyed this video about Tom Glavin, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.